In this video, we're going to work on exercise 8 in chapter 2. And I'm going to go ahead and read. Uh, Meadowdale, Meadowdale Dairy Farms sells organic brown eggs to local customers. They charge $3.25 for a dozen eggs or $0.45 cents for individual eggs that are not part of a dozen. Write a class that prompts a user for the number of eggs in the order and then display the amount owed with a full explanation. Right, so verbose output, basically. Uh, for example, the typical output might be, you ordered 27 eggs. That's two dozen at 325 per dozen and three loose eggs at 45 cents each for a total of $7.85. Okay, we're good, clear on that? So now we got to write the program that's going to do that. So let's um, start a new program called Eggs. And they did indicate that we're going to prompt the user, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's no, like, test version on this one. But guess what you could do if you want? You could write a test version. Okay. So I think you guys are starting to get the, the point of that. So now we're going, going to create another new Java project. And I'm going to say Chapter 2, Exercise 8. And then inside that project here in the source folder, I'm going to right click and make a new class file. Now, of course, if you guys that are listening to the video or maybe even here in the class are still working with JGrasp, um, you just proceed as you did in the past for creating a file, and I hope that's apparent. There's really no obligation to work with Eclipse. But it I'm is hoping a nice to see. What's that, Sean? It really is a nice utility, especially how it, you know, it uh, imports uh, the uh, scanner util import and all of that stuff. It seems like a really efficient application. It is. It is. And, um, you know, it's not quite as slick as Visual Studio is, uh, but close. And it, it's got some features that Visual Studio doesn't. I like the direct tie-in to all the libraries and the explanation of all the methods that are built in. Yeah. You'll find that pretty uh, uh, darn handy as you work. All right, so let's go ahead. We got our main method here, and what we need to figure out is the math. All right, so what is the math that's involved? How do we get to the point of figuring out this information? We know there's 12 eggs in a dozen, right? That's 12. That's a useful number. Um, and they charge 325 for a dozen eggs, so that's the price. Okay, um, and then 45 cents for individual eggs. So these, and, and the reason I'm bringing these up is I could hard code the numbers into the program. In other words, I can use literal values in my equations, or I can assign those values to constants or variables, doesn't really matter, and then use the variable names in the equations. Is there a best practice? What's my favorite answer, you guys? Variable it and constant. It depends. Depends on what you're doing with the program. Really, you could do a lot of this brute force. Not only can you do a brute force, I could probably do all the work or almost all the work in a system out statement. I can even do the math in the system out. It's not really good, considered good practice, though, because then your things aren't separated, so you can't really tweak things and troubleshoot things. So the better practice really is to kind of like enumerate basically everything. So one thing you might want to do is you might want to do um, what is a dozen? A dozen is 12. What is the price? 325. Uh, price of a dozen. 325. And we got our double and the price each. 45 cents. That seems a little steep to me. <laughs> but eggs are so nutritious, it's totally worth it. 
All right, so these are things, these are values that are kind of given. They really shouldn't be changing, right? And then we can use the variable names or the constant names in the equations directly to do our math. Um, now we need to do a little bit of thinking as to what other variables we might need. The one that pops in my head right away is we are going to need to have a total price, right? So let's just call it total. We don't need to give it a value. And then you're going to need subtotal for dozen and subtotal for the eaches. Do we now? <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to what Sean's saying, and he's thinking that we should have subtotals for the individual eggs and the dozen. I'm going to skip that approach, but I understand where you're, where you're going because I think that might be too many. What I do want to do, overkill? though, is... What's that? Is that a bit of overkill on that? It's yeah, slightly. Okay. I mean, I could argue that hard coding constants for the price of the dozens and the eggs and how many are in a dozen is kind of overkill, honestly. Interesting. You know, is there a right and a wrong? If you get it to work, it, it's good. If you're building a giant application where you're doing all sorts of stuff, then you really do want to have the separation of things. That, that helps a lot when you're writing code. But... I agree. Right, and if you're doing, let's say you're doing math with the price of a dozen eggs, and instead of like assigning it to a variable or a constant, you just hard code 325 in your program like 20 different times. Well, now you got to <laughs> go hunt that down 20 different times and change it. So, you know, it's kind of, what's the rationale? Now, one thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put in the number of eggs that's desired, right? How many eggs do you want? I want 59 eggs. Well, that's what that's a, my first constant up there. That's fine. No. And then we're going to do some math and we're going to figure out how many dozens <laughs> of eggs we need, right? Because we're going to do some math and we're going to, we got this many dozens and this many left over. Hey, we're going to have leftovers, so we're going to do that math. Mod. Mod. And I'll just have one for, um, no, let's call it leftover. Okay, not hard coding values into that. Um, now we are going to need our scanner again. Go ahead and throw it in our import. Make sure you type that in. And what are we going to ask input on? How many eggs do you want? You might make it colorful. You go, dude. How about that? All right. Now we're going to grab that and we're going to store it where? Right? And what's my command here? Next. Int. Right? You just want a whole, a whole number of eggs. Okay. Next. What's our math? Somebody says, I need 59 eggs. What are you doing? 59 divided by 12. Divide by 12, right? All right. So we'll take... Dozen, yeah. Yeah. So what we're trying to solve for is dozens. How many dozens do we need? Well, we're going to take the number of eggs... And we're going to divide by a dozen. Uh, you know, that one's kind of a dumb one to hard code, honestly. But now the work is done, so. 
<laughs> right? I mean, I just type in 12 and be done with it. I'm trying to demonstrate a concept here. Really. <laughs> All right. Now, how do we figure how many eggs are left over? You're going to do 59 mod dozen. Your eggs mod right so now that we have the number of dozens now that we have the number of leftovers now we can do the uh, the numerical monetary calculations right so now we're going to say um, Total. You guys are going to, why are you doing total already? I'll show you. Can I do it all in one equation? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah you can, especially if you use parentheses to separate if you need to. Yes, and in fact, if you know your order of operations, you don't even need to do that. That's true. Good point. All right. So the way that we would calculate that is we would say dozens times what? Price of a dozen, right, plus left plus over, left over times price E. Is that right? You betcha. It's political humor. Okay, Sarah. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> now, just before we started here, somebody posed a question, and a very valid question, because you think back to your Visual Basic days and how you format currency in that command. And how do you do that with Java? And what I pointed everybody to is that we have an appendix in the back of the book. And we did a little bit of work here. And we went through, I guess, in a primitive fashion, some of the examples. 936 was the page we determined. Um, and in order to be able to do monetary output, we use, instead of print line, we do print F. And then we use this technique here. But if that will give us monetary format, but too many decimal places. And the trick to overcome that is to basically use this little command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that technique. I don't really care if your homework does this or not. I'm more concerned with the calculation and the logic than the format. But since we're here and we talked about it, let's do it. All right. So we're going to do print. F, and now we're going to do some output. What are we going to say? Um, you ordered, what did they order? Stuff. You ordered how many eggs? No, eggs. dozens, right? It's like one of those words that doesn't look right, does it? No, it doesn't look right to me. It's like, why is that word the way it is? And there's also technically no plural of it, is there? Dozens. I don't. I, you know, that's a separate issue, <laughs> right? I'm just moving to the next line for. Okay.
I'm just trying to remember what what they said in the example per dozen. Yeah, it seems like a lot, but they're organic. <laughs> or so we're told. Yeah, that's not a good one to use there. And here's where we're going to use that fancy formatting. So dollar percent dot to f slash n. Got it? Dollar percent dot two and then we need to output the thing that we want to display which is total. All right, and hopefully this is what you have. Is this okay, guys? All right. Should we see if it works? Let's live large. How many eggs would you like? Now, they gave an example in the book. Maybe it's wise to follow their example. Didn't they? They gave us some numbers. You ordered 27 eggs. Is that how I put mine? Oh, I did? All right. 27. It blew up. What does it say? Eggs. Line 23. What are we missing? <laughs> you ordered eggs, eggs which is, plus dozens, dozen at 325 per dozen, and where is the actual error? Line 23. Exception in thread mean missing format argument. Oh, we're missing. We messed something up. I see like these guys debugging here on the fly. Well, if you look at Do we? Here, I'm going to do a quick pause so we're not fumbling around on the video. All right, so this is what you get when you don't follow instructions. We went back to the appendix, and then we looked through it more carefully at printf. And printf is a method. And a method accepts arguments or parameters, depending on your perspective. And one of the arguments is the string that you're passing in. The other argument is the thing that you're formatting. All right. So here's, here's the thing. And this might be a little fun to do. You see that? So all of this basically is one argument we're passing in. It's a string. At the tail end of it, it has the formatting. And the second parameter is the thing that we're formatting. Different than a print line. So let's save that, cross our fingers, and watch the magic happen. So how many were we typing in there? 27? All right, folks. And that's going to be all we can do for tonight because we are well out of time, as usual. <laughs> Sorry, advanced PHP people. Um, 
and this video ends here. <laughs>